Welcome esteemed viewers to our channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more enlightening content. Our subject today revolves around a figure who has been the focal point of the royal family and royalists, Meghan Markle. A woman of grace and resilience, Meghan has been under the relentless scrutiny of the British media, her every move dissected and criticised. This fascination, however, goes beyond simple curiosity. It is an obsession, a fixation that is as unhealthy as it is alarming. Picture this. A woman who is not of the same race as the majority of the royal family steps into the limelight. She is different, she is unique, and she is unapologetically herself. Suddenly, she becomes the centre of attention, the subject of every whisper and headline. But why? Is it simply because she is different? Or is it because she's an easy target for those who hide their prejudice under the guise of fascination? The attention directed at Meghan isn't just about her. It is a reflection of the deep-seated racism that permeates our society, a testament to the bias that individuals of colour face every day. The obsession with Meghan isn't about her fashion choices or her parenting style. It's about the colour of her skin. It's about the fact that she doesn't fit into the traditional mould of what a royal should be. It's about the fact that she's dared to be different, to challenge the status quo. And this obsession isn't just unhealthy, it's dangerous. It feeds into the narrative that people of colour are other, that they are to be scrutinised and judged more harshly than their white counterparts. It reinforces harmful stereotypes and perpetuates racism. This fixation on Meghan Markle, this unhealthy obsession, goes beyond just the royal family and royalists. It's a societal issue, a reflection of the systemic racism that is still very much a part of our world today. It's time we acknowledge this. It's time we confront this issue head on. The fixation on Meghan is not just alarming, it's a blatant display of racism. Now let's delve into the disturbing trend of the royal family and royalists bullying Meghan Markle. Meghan's entrance into the royal family was met with a wave of optimism. An American actress of mixed race was set to break the mould of the traditional British monarchy. But soon the optimism faded, replaced by a disturbing pattern of bullying and harassment. Picture this. A woman, new to the royal scene, trying her best to adapt to a completely different culture. Not just British, but royal British. Yet she faced a constant barrage of criticism. Her every move, every word, scrutinised and belittled. Instances of bullying were numerous and varied, but they all had an underlying theme. Meghan, the outsider, the other. The British media, ever so keen to stir the pot, played a crucial role in this. Headlines painted Meghan as a diva a social climber, a woman who didn't know her place. Then came the racial undertones. Meghan's African-American heritage was used against her in subtle and not-so-subtle ways. News stories focused on her exotic background, her gangster family. Even her son Archie was not spared from the racial bias. The message was clear, Meghan was different, and in the eyes of the royalists, not in a good way. This pattern of bullying, however, was not just a reflection of a few prejudiced individuals. It was indicative of a deep-seated racist attitude within the royal family and among royalists. An attitude that saw Meghan not as a breath of fresh air, but as a threat to the purity of the monarchy. The bullying Meghan has faced is a clear indication of the deep-seated racism in the royal family and among royalists. It's a stark reminder that even in the 21st century, we have a long way to go before we can truly say we live in a post-racial world. But with Meghan's resilience, and the support of those who believe in equality, we can hope for a future where skin colour is not a measure of one's worth. Next, we'll tackle the audacious belief of the royal family and royalists that they own Harry and Meghan. In a world that has championed individual rights and personal autonomy, it is astonishing to observe the pervasive notion that the Sussexes, Harry and Meghan, are somehow community property. The royal family, royalists and parts of the British media seem to operate under the illusion that they have a right to control and even destroy these two individuals. Imagine for a moment the audacity of such a belief to consider oneself entitled to dictate the life of another, to scrutinise their every move and to relish in their trials and tribulations. This is not just an infringement on their personal rights, but a gross violation of their human dignity. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are not characters in a play, existing solely for public entertainment. They are real people, with real lives, 
who have made the conscious decision to step back from royal duties for the sake of their mental health and the well-being of their family. Yet, the royal family and royalists seem to be stuck in a time warp where they believe they hold the power to control and manipulate the narrative and lives of Harry and Meghan. This illusion of ownership extends beyond the royal household. The media, too, plays a significant role in perpetuating this disturbing belief. They feed off the drama, the controversy and the scandal, often forgetting that at the heart of all this are two individuals trying to live their lives as normally as possible under the constant glare of the public eye. This audacious belief of ownership is not just disturbing, it is dangerous. It strips Harry and Meghan of their individuality, their freedom and their right to privacy. It perpetuates a toxic culture of entitlement and control that has no place in our modern society. The royal family and royalists have no right to control or destroy Harry and Meghan. Their audacious belief of ownership is disturbing. Despite the challenges, Meghan continues to rise above it all. Let's explore her triumphs. In the face of adversity, Meghan Markle has remained a beacon of strength and resilience. Her journey, albeit marked by trials, is nothing short of inspiring. Despite the harsh treatment she's received from the royal family and royalists, she's managed to carve out a space for herself in the world, a space where she is unequivocally Meghan. Her achievements speak volumes of her tenacity. From her successful acting career, where she graced our screens in the hit series Suits, to her philanthropic work, Meghan has consistently proven her mettle. She co-founded the Archwell Foundation with Prince Harry, a non-profit organisation dedicated to building a better world, one act of compassion at a time. But perhaps Meghan's biggest triumph lies in her ability to redefine narratives. She has broken the mould of the traditional royal wife, choosing instead to speak out on issues that matter to her, from mental health to racial equality. Her interview with Oprah Winfrey was a testament to her bravery. She laid bare the struggles she faced within the royal family, giving a voice to the voiceless and showing the world that it is possible to take on an institution as powerful as the monarchy and live to tell the tale. Meghan's resilience is not just about surviving, but about thriving. She has emerged from the ashes of her royal life, not as a victim, but as a victor. She has shown us that it is possible to reclaim your narrative, to stand up to bullies, and to build a life that is true to who you are. With every step, Meghan continues to defy expectations. She is unapologetically herself, and that is her greatest triumph. She has proven that she is more than just a duchess, more than just the wife of a prince. She is Meghan Markle, a woman of strength, courage and dignity. No matter how horribly they treat Meghan, she continues to win. Her resilience is admirable. Finally, let's look at how this obsession and racism is leading to the downfall of the royal family and royalists. Their actions, their constant need to control and manipulate, are tarnishing the once untouchable image of the monarchy. The cracks are showing and the public is witnessing the royal family's fall from grace. The royalists, those loyal to the crown, are no different. Their insatiable obsession with Meghan Markle, their relentless criticism and racism, is painting a bleak picture of their character. These actions, instead of damaging Meghan, are actually causing their own self-destruction. The royalist actions are not only affecting their reputation, but they are also damaging the very institution they claim to love and protect. The royal families and royalists' racism and obsession is causing a shift in public opinion. People are beginning to see through the facade. The once revered institution is now being questioned. The royal family and royalists are facing backlash for their actions, not just from the public, but from international communities as well. It's a strange irony, isn't it? The very people who are supposed to uphold the honour and dignity of the monarchy are causing its downfall. Their actions, their racism, their obsession is causing a rift between the monarchy and the people. This is leading to a decline in their popularity and a loss of respect. The royal family and royalists need to realise that their actions have consequences. Their racism and obsession is not only damaging their reputation, but it's also causing their downfall. They are losing the respect and admiration of the people, and this loss is something they may never regain. In conclusion, the royal family and royalists are causing their own downfall with their racism and obsession. Their actions are not going unnoticed. The world is watching, and the world is not pleased. The royal family and royalists must change their ways or face the consequences. It's a steep price to pay, 
but it's a price they must pay for their actions.